Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. And we are looking forward to different questions of the chapter four, talking about several techniques and trying to understand them, how exactly to look forward to solve them and what is the best approach to get them right. Now, the next question which we are talking about is question number 24. And this comes along with the test decision table test technique and trying to understand what could be the complexity in order to resolve these type of defects. So this question is uh, as follows, decision table testing is being performed on a speeding fine system. Two test cases have already been generated for the rules R1 and the R4, which are as shown below. So if you look at the diagram here or the table, uh, which is first being displayed on the screen, is uh, the set of conditions which we are talking about where the speed is greater than 50 and if it is a school zone then the action is uh, either you go with $250 fine or driving license will be impounded or withdrawal right so they have found two test cases but if you remember the concepts of decision table when you have two different conditions to be tested you have four possible combinations right you have true 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 false false true and false false of course you need to possibly test four different ways in order to have the coverage or you, this is how you t minimize your test cases by just having four test case the scenario can be covered so all they are trying to tell you in the line number one with the first table that we have got already two test cases out of four which is covering both true and both false now all they are asking you in the second table is we have four different other possibilities which you are looking to pick it up and the only thing we have to pick up is just two more test cases right because we got two out of four and they have given you choices as four different options that is dt1 dt2 dt3 and dt4 and they're asking you which are the other two tests which you can actually pick to complete the table right above that right so which two of the additional test cases would achieve the full coverage of the complete decision table when combined with the test cases that already have been generated for rule one and rule four. So the only thing they are telling you between DT1, DT2, DT3, DT4, out of these four, which are those two tests which you really need to pick up in order to complete R1, 2, R4. So R2 and R3 has to be picked up. So all we have to find is true false and false true these are the only two conditions which are remaining for us so let's start evaluating them and the only difference they have or only trick they have used here is instead of giving you true for the first condition true or false they've given you the value so nothing much you just have to apply it in the equation that is if speed is greater than 50 it is true if speed is less than 50 it is false so let's look at dt1 it says 55 and true for the school zone, right? You don't have to worry about the outputs. A lot of us get involved in the output discussion that have we covered this output, that output. No, it's all about the inputs, which we have to figure out. So if you see the DT1, DT1 says the speed is 55, which is greater than 50. And yes, it is true. And the school zone is also true. So if you compare back to your table, R1 is already covering that. So why would you duplicate that test, right? So DT1 is ruled out. DT2 says speed is 44, which is less than 50. And the school zone is true. So yes, this is one of our cases which we are looking for that is false and true. DT3 is 66 and true, which is again true and true as 66 is greater than 50. And DT4, 77 and false, that means True and false is another combination which we are looking for. So it's very straightforward and simple to sometimes solve these questions. It's just that we try making it slightly complex, which is not at all required. So the right answer here is DT2 and DT4 are the two remaining test cases which should be included along with R1 and R4 to complete the four tests required to test the scenario. Let's step into the next question here and we are talking about the straight transition testing. This is equally a tricky one, but uh, again, if you follow the logic of a straight transition testing, 
you would be able to solve this very quickly. If I talk about the question number 25 here, given the following state model of battery charger software, which of the following sequences of transitions provide the highest level of transition coverage? Team, please remember when such type of questions appear, you have to be careful whether they are asking you to cover the states or the transitions. Now here they're talking about transitions. So the very first thing you should immediately do is count the number of transitions in the given diagram. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 arrows and each arrow represents a transition between two states. So there are 10 transitions in this diagram. And the question is which of these given following path covers the maximum number of transitions out of 10, right? So let's start counting them and look at the right answer. A, off to wait. So off to wait covers one transition there. Wait to off covers the second one. Then again, off to wait. Now, that's where people go wrong. The moment it repeats the same path, is that a different transition? No, off to wait is getting repeated. So it's just that two transition out of 10. It's not three because the transition is still the same, it's just looping there. Doesn't mean that it counted three transitions, right? So off to wait, wait to off, off to wait is covering only two transitions on the diagram there. Then you say wait to trickle, three, trickle to charge, four, charge to high, five, high to charge, six, charge to low, seven. So out of 10, the first path covers only seven transitions. Okay, let's look at B. Wait to trickle, one. Trickle to wait, back, so two, right? And then we have uh, wait uh, to off, off to wait, so four. Wait to trickle, back again, so repetition, you don't have to worry. So it's four again, still. Then you have trickle to charge, which is new, so five, right? and uh, charge to low, low to charge, so seven. This also covers seven transitions. Number C, high to charge, which is one, charge to low, two, low to charge, three, charge to trickle, five, sorry, four, trickle to weight, five, weight to trickle, which is uh, reverse, six, trickle to weight is, uh, seven and that's getting sorry that's getting repeated six and wait to trickle again repeated so totally six six transition out of ten is only covered here let's talk about wait to trickle one uh, wait to trickle one trickle to charge two charge to high three high to charge four charge to trickle back again is five trickle to wait is six wait to off is seven and off to wait is eight so on the entire right side, all eight transitions are covered in this path, except the side on the low. So out of 10, it covers eight, and thus giving us the maximum coverage what we really need. So putting it up all together, the right answer here would be D, wait to trickle, trickle to charge, charge to high, high to charge, charge to trickle, trickle to wait, wait to off, off to wait, covers eight transitions out of 10. And that makes totally sense that this is what is the right answer. So this is how sometimes you need to make your job simpler and uh, just figure out what you really need to pick up in order to uh, get to the right conclusion and, uh, you know, get to the correct answer, in fact. So getting the right answer is pretty important. And all you need to do is put your efforts and attention, what you really need to put in order to get to the right answer. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with remaining questions of this chapter in our next tutorial. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, uh, keep understanding the context. Should you have anything else, feel free to drop me in comment. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Take care team and happy learning. See you next time.